Okay, and then coming out of that, we're going to get into the heavy section where the electric guitar comes in. And the chords there are, like I explained in the beginning, A minor. And we're going to play this C over G, but we're also going to add our little finger here, okay, on E3. You get the G note there. And then D7 over F sharp. And then F, E. And you can do that if you want, you know, the thumb over if you're good at that. And E. Okay, and one of the guitars, I'm pretty sure, does that, has an open E, so if you can thumb over and get that, that open E, okay, it's like an E major 7, okay, so one of them does that, I hear that in there sometimes, but the other one is just a straight E, okay, so it sounds like this. going to do there is it's just down and up right with our picking or our strumming hand and he's kind of he's kind of going open to corded right okay and then when you hit this chord the C over G do the same thing no, I'm leaving that on, okay, but I'm, I'm taking the others off. So, sometimes I'll just take that one up, right? Same thing here. Leaving that C on the whole time. Then F. And in the demo, when I did that F, I did one F like this. Um, you know, just to get that, that major seventh in there. So that part would have sounded like this. So that's how that goes. And also, I wanted to mention the, uh, the meter in this song is crazy. Like, the majority of it is at about 133. 132-ish, around there, 134 sometimes. Uh, but when it gets to this part, it goes up to 140. Okay, so that part is sped up big time. And then when you get into this part, uh, it's slowed down again. It's down to about 135, 134. And this is one of the great things about Zeppelin that I love so much. They speed up and they slow down to suit the song. They play with just great feel. And... Uh, you know, when I did the demo, playing against a drum machine is just, <laughs> it just, it's okay, you know, but you can't get the feel that you do with a real drummer, and especially a guy as good as John Bonham. If you really listen to that heavy part, he really puts the brakes on that and just pulls the whole band back, and it really gives it a lot of power, you know, so that's a really, really great part. Okay, so that's, that's pretty well all the parts there are now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the variation in the second half of the song on the main lick, okay, because he shifts positions. I guess it comes out of that. And we're into this, this sort of third verse. And it goes like this. Now we position shift. And what happens on the bass is he just rides the A now, okay? The actual bass guitar is still doing the descending, but the guitar stays on the A. And what we do is we come up here, with third finger on D7, first finger on A5, <laughs> G5, and little finger on B8, right? And then put our middle finger on B6. They're kind of staccato. That one's staccato. Now we're going to shift this down two frets, but put our middle finger here on G4, right? So we go from here.
there, B6 to B5. Now we're going to shift this down a fret, but instead of this, we're going to put our first finger on G2. So if we're going from that to that, and we're going to go it's exactly the same pattern as that first one, but just down here with their uh, third finger on D4. So D4, G2, um, B5, B3. Okay, so we've got and then we finish it off with high E string there, right? And then we go low E on the bottom. And we go back up here. So the whole thing slowly. that E string ring as we go back up and so that's one of the variations in that position and the other variation is almost identical except for one note so we just go instead of we're doing it backwards there we're going E F first one would be second one identical after that right and when you when you hit that E you want to definitely let that high E ring right so okay and then sometimes he'll go that one where it's all C back up here You just have to listen to which ones are which there um, and figure out how you want to do that. But those are the parts that he plays. And that actually, that's my favorite variation. I think it sounds really, really nice. Okay, so that's it. That's pretty well everything. Now, those are all the four, four parts that you need to learn. Those are, I've showed you almost every variation there. Um, but like I say, the main lick is, it's only those four notes, right? It's going to be one of those, okay, or that one with the F sharp, but that only happens once. Okay, then there's the ending. We're coming out of that, um, the heavy part, right? Play that F, right? Picking forward and pick backwards on the E, right? Forward on the F, backward on the E, and then he does this thing, just trilling between uh, G2 and G4, right? So. Okay, and then we get into the end lick. It's a combination of two guitars and bass. And the bass does, does this descending lick. Okay, while the guitars do this. And while one is arpeggiating those, The other is just plucking all three strings at the same time, right? And I'm doing it up here, which is D7, G9, B10. But you could do it here too. You know, just A2 or G2, B5, E5. And then just sliding down one fret, right?
right? But I chose to do it up here. So you've got that, and then you just drop your that G9 to G8. Okay, so that's how they do it on the record. Um, because the guitar doesn't play any bass lines, but if you want to play it by yourself, right, and use the bass lines, um, I've done it up here. I've seen other guys play it down here, and it's super hard, right? You know, these, these crazy stretches that just hurt my wrist, and they're just completely impractical. Like, Really, nobody is ever going to play like that. It's too hard, right? So I worked out a way where you can play the whole thing up here, and it's a little bit tricky. But it's more doable than these, these insane stretches, okay? So what I do here is I've got, like I explained, you've got uh, D7, G9, B10. And I've got my middle finger here on E9. Okay, for the bass. And then I'm going to slide those two fingers down a fret, but keep these fingers here. Now, the only drawback of doing it this way is it's really hard to keep that string ringing. But it's way easier overall, and I'm willing to put up with that, you know, to compromise holding that that A string or that A note to be able to play this okay and have that bass line in there. So we're going to play this and then drop those two down. Okay now we're going to sh shift positions and we're going to put our middle finger here on uh, E7, D7 and G7, third finger, little finger, little uh, first finger here on E5. Right? That's a little tricky to get that chord because you kind of got to cram a lot of fingers into a small space. Okay, then we're just going to drop that middle finger down one fret. So we've got this. Okay, so that's how I get that thing, uh, you know, the bass line and the guitar parts, right? Or you could go. but I like the arpeggios. And then we've got the last chord, which is, it's just uh, D7, G5. Okay, so you've got that open B in there and that open E. And the way you do that is this. Okay, so you arpeggiate it. on the B string and then you arpeggiate it on the E string. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right? And you do that twice. And the last time you just hold it on the B, right? And finish off with the A minor chord, bar chord. Right? And there's a series of acoustic fills and electric fills, mostly acoustic, where he's just kind of jamming around playing looks, right? And I just threw the one of them in there because, I don't know, <laughs> there's so much going on in this song. But I'll just show you the one I put in there. It goes like this. It's just based in A minor uh, scale, which is C major, same thing, right? I'm not going to say every fret because you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, then a little G2, B1. 
And then we do this. And then he does this fast, like. And then he'll do it again down the next string, so... Right? Just on the F note here, on D3. Right? So it's... Finishes it off with this. Okay, so it's starting on the B flat, which is weird, I know, but that's what he does. Chromatically up to the C, chromatically down. Pull off, and then strike the a, open A. Okay, so that whole thing would be. And that's how, how he does that one. But there's a, like I said, there's a ton of those in there. I'm not going to go over all of them because really he's, you know, I'm sure he did that in one or two takes or just kind of jam things, right? But I threw that one in there because, uh, I don't know, I, sh I thought I should do at least one of them. So when we do the heavy part, we, the electric comes in. What I hear is him doing octaves, which is just E3 and D5, sliding up to uh, two frets from the, you know, from the G to the A, right? Okay, and then we've got where you can just open, right? And then we've got F sharp, and we can bounce that off the open too. And then we've got F, F power chord, right, to the E, so, and they're all bouncing off that open, right, except for the first one. Okay, and it goes back up there at one point, right? Okay, and that's that part of the electric. And then the only other part of the electric is the uh, that slide thing, right? And I think that's how they did it. Um, you know, when the acoustic is uh, that part there, that I I just did it with my slide, just went like that, and just added a whole ton of reverb to it afterwards, right? Okay, so. That's pretty well it for what I did with the electric part. That's it. That's the song. Um, great song, you know, like super epic. And it's a really good example of how Jimmy Page will take, you know, a basic idea and just expand on it and be really creative with it and come up with all these different ways to play kind of like the same thing, right? So anyways, I hope you get something out of the video. And uh, yeah, we'll talk to you next time.